right, so I'm just going to, these are questions that I'm asking everyone across the state. Everyone equally. All right, you can okay. answer it any way you want. Literally, figuratively, however Let, you want to do it. Let's hope I know. <laughs> that is the right answer. <laughs> What's your favorite place? Favorite place? Well, it'd have to be right here in Rugby, Virginia, you know, because it's where I've always lived, and and I don't I don't know. I think just people generally love their home, and and it's where I've always lived, and where I work, and this shop right here, I spend almost all my time that I'm not playing music or asleep. I'm spending here in the shop. Did you grow up here? I grew up right here in this community, and I always lived right in this same place, and and or this community around here. My old home place is, joins this place on the back side over here, it's like a mile away, where I was raised from a kid. But I've always lived right in this area right here. You never had the urge to move? No, not too much. I've been real fortunate to get to travel a lot. I've been to most, most of the countries of the world, you know, to play music and, and, and it's wonderful to see places like that and be in different places but not as wonderful as it is to get back to rugby and be at home. What's your family history? Well, mostly my family history, you know, the Henderson is a real Scottish name, you know, uh, the, you know, the, I, I imagine that name come from Scotch, Irish roots and, and, uh, and especially from, uh, Scotland, because at Henderson they have their own plaid, you know, and you know, I tell people, you know, leave this in here if you want to or not, but I always tell them they invented kilts, you know, that they've got their own kilt plaid and they can invent them because they say a sheep can hear a zipper 50 yards away. And, <laughs> and, and anyway, but I think it's from Scottish roots, you know, the Henderson family, and they've lived here and for years in these mountains, and uh, my my parents did craft work. They were blacksmiths, and uh, and when I remember growing up, we were farmers. You know, everybody around here had a small farm, and uh, grew up, you know, working and and in tobacco, and we grew everything we ate, and and it was constant work. You had to work, and so you had to take off time to play music and stuff like that. <clears throat> My dad was an old-time fiddler, and. It was pretty easy to, when you'd be out in the field working, you come in to, we call it dinner, at lunchtime, you know, when you take a break from working. And if I could talk him into getting the fiddle out, he liked to play so good, he'd get started and you'd get out of at least a couple of hours of work, you know, if you could get him to fiddling. And that, that was a good trick, and it always worked. And uh, so that's sort of background stuff in music and farming and, and just always lived right here in this community. Do you know how your family came to rugby? Uh, no, they've always certainly been here as long as I can remember. And uh, my grandparents, uh, I've never studied back too far, you know, the genealogy stuff. But there's always, always been around here as far as I know, at least my far back as two grandpas, you know. And uh, they always lived and farmed right in this community, as far as I know. What's in your backyard? In my backyard? Uh, well, some of my favorite things in my backyard, lots of times, is my 57 Thunderbird and and stuff I play with and and, uh, and just uh, the regular little bit of work. I have to mow it every, in the summertime every once in a while. And... and uh, that's, that's, that's about all I can think of. It's in the backyard, you know. Last question. What are your hopes? My hopes? Well, I guess uh, probably like anybody's hopes, you know, just, you know, stay, stay healthy enough to keep playing music and hang around for a while and, and uh, you know, I always have hopes for everybody to keep playing music, young people, to, uh, we, we teach and help and work with them and, and uh, I can remember even far back as when I was young how much fun I had playing music. And so I have hopes for young folks to learn how to play old time music and keep, uh, that's probably the, the mainest thing. And uh, hopes to keep, you know, healthy enough to be able to still whittle and carve and make guitars and stuff. That's my, I guess it'd be my main hopes. 
Did you ever imagine? Uh, do you, when did you start making guitars? Almost 50 years ago. Can you imagine 50 years ago that you would be world-renowned guitar maker? Well, no, not not really at all. You know, I'm not sure that's all all that world-renowned, but uh, I, I certainly would not have. When I first started making guitars, I wanted to make them because I didn't have a good one, and thought I could make something better. And uh, and I've been doing that ever since. And I would never have thought when I started making guitars or playing music, as far as that goes, that I would ever have been out of my community right here or had people come want me to make things for them. And, and that was, a, I don't think, something I even dreamed about. I, I wouldn't even have thought would have happened. But it's been a real wonderful thing, you know, and I've been able to meet wonderful folks and travel to great places on account of my instrument making and playing a little bit. and and. Uh, it's always a, been a real blessing to me and that I've got to do all that stuff and I'm real, you know, happy about it. And, and so that's a, you know, it's cool. Folks like you come and take pictures and videos and and uh, it's always exciting to me. I mean, we're the historical society, so we have so many artifacts. Do you ever think about these being a, a piece of you that will last much longer than everyone here in the room? And oh yeah, it's, I think about that a lot, and uh, I've, uh, you know, always try to make stuff that lasts and holds up, and and of course some of them will end up probably already have in museums and things where people just look at them. I'd rather a little bit rather they be played, but but sometime or another there'll be some of them around and. I never will forget, I used to travel and play with a fellow named Albert Hash, who made wonderful fiddles, and he's been gone for years and years, but you still see his work, and he's hear his work, and his fiddles, and, and that's sort of like that. But one time we were, we, I played in a band with him, and we traveled over to Lansing to pick up my brother, who was uh, going with us that night to do a gig, and the barber, local barbers, we parked right in front of his shop, and was a fellow that that we know and it's something I've always remembered him saying he come out and me and Albert was sitting in the car waiting for my brother to come out and Jason the barber came out and was talking to us and he said you know you guys made all those instruments and everything and they'll probably be around and people will remember you for a hundred years and said my whole life's work will be grabbed back out in two weeks <laughs> I guess you guess it would if you're a barber you know <laughs>